hello. It is I, Rudai. Welcome to Advanced Geeks and Gamers. Uh, this is our character creation video series where we'll be making characters for the upcoming live action play, fifth edition live action play uh, of the same name, Advanced Geeks and Gamers, where we're going to have some familiar faces from the Geeks and Gamers crew that you're going to recognize uh, who are going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons, most of them for the first time. Um, the vibe we're going here for is, if you've ever watched Always Sunny in Philadelphia, um, this is kind of like the game plays d d it's, yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to see see how they handle this. I, I've had a lot <laughs> of first groups. So I've never had a group of uh, personalities like this. Um, now, you probably recognize the person next to me. She's uh, been on several of uh, the main event. Um, I don't know if you've been on f and I'm trying to remember, but... Not f and not F&T, no. In the chat. Okay. Plenty of time. In the chat. <laughs> we're, we're always there in the chat. Uh, but my nerdy home, Steph. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm kind of excited I'm, about this. I'm very excited about this. I think it's <laughs> going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I honestly, I can't wait. I, I just got finished uh, making characters with Blabs. Um, okay. So, and she's made her character. And it's, um, if it's any indication of what's to come, it's <laughs> this is going to be a very interesting show. Oh, um, but go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Tell um, the people who are watching who you are, what you do for Geeks and Gamers, and uh, what do you do? Ah, yes. Well, my name is Stephanie, my nerdy home. Um, you guys see me in the chat a lot, modding G&G, &G, FNT, Drunk 3PO, Ryan. Um, what I do for G&G, &G, I uh, edit. I edit for the main Geeks and Gamers channel, as well as the G&G &G Clips channel. I contribute to both those channels. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it um other than that i have my own twitch my own youtube twitter and instagram that i take care of as well you're, you're a bit of a, a meme queen too i've seen yeah. some of your work oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> that brings joy good. to my life i'll never stop memeing I, I think it brings <laughs> joy to a lot of people's lives probably everybody but ryan but <laughs> he has no soul so that's okay <laughs> and jay as, <laughs> and I, jay. as, I, as jay. I cough i'm i'm sick i'm a little under <laughs> yeah. the weather so I just think you're, it's funny. <laughs> you were doing Jay's, you're doing a Jay impersonation. That's all I was. Saying. Yes, I was doing a Jay impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. So that is Steph, my nerdy home. And uh, I am a newer face. So if you haven't seen me around, I guess I probably should have started introducing myself. I am a Rudai. Uh, I am the head of the Geeks and Gamers Tabletop Channel, a new venture for the brand uh, where Geeks and Gamers is going to be taking a foray into the tabletop world for the first time. Um, getting our feet wet first with 5th edition. Uh, now, I'm very experienced playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but the, the brand itself is kind of getting its feet wet, jumping into that. We'll be doing lore videos, actual plays. Um, but the goal is to eventually expand out and cover more systems, more books, and even not just tabletop RPGs, but board games, card games, uh, the little miniature like uh, Warhammer-style games. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so all sorts of things. We, we really want to kind of just create a space uh, where people can... Just have fun and explore this hobby and uh, without all the woke guilt and judgment that we see out in those communities right now. But for this stream, we are focused on Dungeons and Dragons and we did select fifth edition. I'm not going to go into my whole spiel about that here, but there is another video on this YouTube channel if you want to watch it where I explain my reasons for picking the system and why I think it's important for the uh, fight to preserve our gaming culture to use this system despite some of the woker elements in charge of it. Um, so this stream is going to be an eight-part mini-series. And uh, as I mentioned, almost everybody is relatively new to the game. Have you ever played D&D before outside I'm, of our little intro? No, I'm brand new to D&D. I've seen it played. I've watched people play it. Um, but I've never played it myself. I've never had, like, the really the time to sit there and play D&D and learn it. So I've, I've watched it being played a bunch of times, but I've never played it. Okay, and when you say you watch it, are you watching, like, friends play it, or are you yeah. watching, like, a stream? Friends play it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun, and uh, it, once you get a taste of it, 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 can, it can be pretty addicting, actually. So <laughs> uh, you might find yourself making time for it down the road. Maybe. Um, the, the small bit that we played before introducing <laughs> us, I was like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> yeah, and that was without the character shenanigans. Like, uh -huh. I... I, I don't want to spoil anything for Blabs' character, but uh, okay. 
I think she is new to it as well. She is. Yeah, she she's is. Brand new. She yeah. is brand new. And uh, she, she has made a very interesting character backstory, and it's pretty crazy. So um, we're going to see what you come up with as well. And uh, what was fun is when these characters come together and they start interacting and uh, you guys kind of get like a chemistry together, not just as like, you already sort of have a camaraderie as people of G and G, but uh, the characters too, the way they mesh and play off each other is, can be a lot of fun. Um, so as you mentioned, we did do sort of like a brief introduction, right guys got you familiar with the idea of what the D20 is, uh, how roll 20 works. Uh, the general broad strokes of what the game's about. And uh, I gave you very, very small introduction to like the classes and what sort of things you can be and play as in the game. And then kind of gave you guys homework assignment to go check out those things and see what caught your eye. So what did catch your eye? What sort of class are you thinking about playing? Um, well, I wanted to be a wizard. A wizard, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? Blab's guessed in the last video, and she guessed correctly. Uh, she couldn't remember what you'd put on the sheet, but she said, I think she's probably going to be a wizard. That's my guess. So she did good. <laughs> Blabs, if you're watching, good job. Yeah. I wanted to be a wizard. Um, you told us that, like, if you love Harry Potter, you could be a wizard. If you want to be an animal or whatever. I didn't know what that was called, so I picked a wizard. Okay. So Druid would probably be like the animal side, but wizard is, is definitely yeah. good. And uh, there's so many flavors of wizard. Like you don't have, you could be a Harry Potter kind of like uh, uh, nerdy bookish type wizard. Uh, you can be like a necromancer. You can be uh, somebody who's into like enchantments and charming people, uh, an illusionist. There, there are so many different ways that you can play it and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's so many different flavors of wizards that you'll be able to pick from. And um, they're, they're very spell oriented. They're very mm -hmm. knowledge oriented. Um, so as a wizard, you'll carry around a spell book, which is kind of like the core of how you, you know your magic. Every night you look at the spell book, you look at the spells you know, and you, you memorize enough of them that you can use them the next day. Um, so what you put in your spell book, what spells you find as you're like fighting monsters and like plundering tombs and stuff, uh, will just make you more powerful. It's going to be great. Um, did you happen to, now I, I, I come to find out when I spoke to Blabs, in the last episode that uh, she had not looked at races at all. Did you happen to look at no, any of races? Okay, well, we can explore that uh, here. So without uh, further ado, let's uh, go to roll 20. So we are using roll 20 as our platform of choice. Um, and we're gonna be using the character mancer specifically as kind of like a, uh, a digital wizard that walks you screen by screen on building a character and makes it super easy. And once you've picked all your options, it just fills out the sheet for you. It takes out oh, the nice. work of trying to trying to figure out where all those numbers go. Uh, so you can go ahead and click next. All right. So the very first question it asks you is the one that we don't know the answer to. What race <laughs> do you want to be? Um, now, Blabs was very curious about what it specifically meant by race. It's going to be like, are you a human? Are you a dwarf? Are you a goblin, an elf? Um, and D and D has grown so large that there's like a ton of options now. Um, so yeah, so if you if you're scrolling through that list and you see something of interest and you click on it, it that window to the right will actually bring up like a picture of it, so you can see what it looks like if you're not sure. I'm kind of curious about the halfling. Halflings, uh, okay. They are um, perfect. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit on the little white screen. Uh, like if you ever over the white part and scroll down, it'll give you like a, okay, pictures of these guys. They're kind of like uh, hobbits. They're, they're sort yeah. of what a hobbit would be in D and D. Um, and it kind of gives you the, they're, they're very just, fun. They're very fun. Yeah, I just think it would be really funny to play a halfling wizard. Okay, uh, a short little halfling wizard sounds good to me. Uh, if you look on the left, now, what's, side, the, what's the difference between? Um, PHB and a hat. Where did it go? Because I saw the difference is you should pick PHB. Oh, okay. All right. Because <laughs> uh, the other one is like uh, it's like the free version of the software before you buy the books, and they're I think they're limited or something. So the PHB just has everything we need. So we'll, okay, we'll stick to that. Uh, so as in halfling, if you uh, scroll down a little bit on the left side, 
uh, you can see that your ability score you get. Um, so you're going to have six ability scores when you make your character. Strength, dexterity, constitution, uh, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. They kind of are the base of how all your abilities and skills work. Um, so you get a little dexterity, meaning you're kind of nimble, you're kind of stealthy, you can get into small places. Um, you're going to know how to speak common, which is like the basic language. You'll know halfling. Uh, but those three right there at the end there, those are the things that are really cool about being um, a halfling. Lucky in particular. Um, so I think if you remember from our little tutorial together where you were kind of learning the basics, if you roll a natural one on something, it's like an automatic failure. Right. Well, halflings have a special ability called lucky, where if they do roll a natural one on an attack ability check or saving throw, you can re-roll it and try to get a better result. Um, you're brave despite being so small, so you you kind of uh, have some resistance to things that try to frighten you in the game. I like that. I like that. And uh, yeah, so small but brave, and uh, and then the halfling nimbleness is cool too. Um, you can like squeeze past people without getting slowed down because you're you're kind of small and nimble. Yeah, that sounds um, perfect. It's great. So <laughs> we've got so done underneath it. You get a sub race, which is kind okay. of like uh, there's like distinct versions of halflings that give you a few other benefits. I'll let you take a look at those. Now, mark of healing, mark of hospitality. I kind of like healing. Does it? Yeah, so let's take a look at what that does. Um, go ahead and scroll down on the left hand side. I think it should tell us. Um, there we go. Yeah, so you get it now. You get a bonus to your wisdom as well, and uh, so on medicine checks, uh, you get kind of like an extra little bonus. So like if you're trying to like stable so, stabilize someone who's dying or try to you know figure out what their illness is, you'll get a bonus on that. Um, you have the ability to cast cure wounds, which is a spell oh, to heal yeah. people. Um. And then it looks like you got some more spells of the mark down there. So uh, if you have the spell casting or packed magic class feature, uh, then you can pick from these spells as well. That doesn't necessarily apply to you yet. But those first two do. The medical intuition and the healing touch are very nice. Okay. That sounds perfect. All right. All right so you are a halfling with uh, the mark of healing. Go ahead and click next. All right. So this is my class. So I just pick wizard. Wizard. All right, so you picked your uh, your race, and now we're looking at your class. So you pick wizard, correct? Wizard, uh, yeah. The PHB version, yeah, if there's more yeah. than one. All right. And um, it tells you out the bat that you are proficient in daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and crossbows. What does that mean? That just means when you use those weapons, if you're not proficient with a weapon, you, you suffer a penalty. Okay. You won't with those weapons because you're proficient. Um, skill proficiency. Um, so there are several skills that you could possess, and this allows you to be a little bit better at them. Uh, so you can look down that list. If you see anything that catches your eye and you want to know what it does, just let me know, and I'll explain. Now, if I pick medicine, since I'm, like, healing, would that be good? Yeah, so that means you're even better at it. You get a plus even two better. to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to choose that. And what is Arcana? Uh, so Arcana is like um, mystical knowledge and understanding. So understanding uh, magic, for example, you might be able to, just by looking at what somebody's doing or a spell they're casting, or you might see an extra plane or being and know something about its nature or where it's from. Um, maybe there's a mystical artifact and you're trying to ascertain its purpose or function. Arcana would come into play in those situations. Okay. That sounds good. Um, so it's the... That sounds nice. What I mean, investigation, because it so arcana arcana is just like with uh s mystical objects strictly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, investigation is going to be more of um, a combination of things. It could be learning how something works. So maybe somebody else in the party has noticed a trap, and using investigation, you could try to figure out how it works so you don't trigger it. Uh, investigation could also be like um, sussing out information. So maybe you're at a bar and you're trying to get a local rumor or find out uh, where somebody's hiding. You might be able to gather that information from like a bartender or something. Okay. That sounds like something a human would like 
be more proficient at since I'm small. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe you're just so small and full of spirit that people just want to talk to you. Yeah, oh, that's true. <sighs> that's true. Now, if now if I pick Ar Arcana, mm -hmm. um, since I'm a wizard, does that, mm -hmm. again, boost that level? Or give it a boost or whatever? Yeah, so this you're getting this skill because you're a wizard. Uh, yeah, so I'm it's one of the that. options as a wizard. Uh, but yeah, so there there are things that when you're playing, you'll run across, like maybe you'll come across a spell book or a spell and you're trying to understand it. Arcana will help you decipher that. So it could be useful in your wizarding journey. Okay. Yeah, because I'm leaning more towards that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Medicine and Arcana. Okay. There you go. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit on the left-hand side, um, cantrips is just telling you that you're going to get some cantrips. Uh, spell books, just telling you you're going to have a spell book. Those are kind of no-brainers. Uh, ritual casting is, um, how do I explain this? Uh, so ritual casting, so normally when you cast a spell, you have a set number of what's called spell slots on your sheet. Uh, so you might only be able to do four level one spells in a day. You might be able to do two level two spells in a day. And every time you cast a spell, you use one of those slots. Um, okay. so if you use all four of your slots, you have no more level one spells for the rest of the day. Ritual casting says, um, that if you had, so like most of those things are instant. So if you were to cast like a, um, uh, a healing spell or something, you would, you would just touch them and instantly heal and that would spend your slot. Ritual casting is saying if you have extra time and uh -huh. you're not in a hurry, you can ritually cast it. You can take 10 minutes to cast the spell without using one of your spell slots. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, Arcane Recovery is basically um, an ability to get some of your spell slots back on what's called a short rest. I, I don't remember if I explained the difference between a short rest and a long rest to you, uh, but a short rest is like a, you guys take an hour break in character, like in the game. Uh, maybe you're resting, licking your wounds after a battle, uh, whatever the case might be, you heal up a little bit, and some abilities come back on a short rest. Um, so on a short rest, this is saying that you'll get a few of your spell slots you've used back. A long rest is like overnight. So when you've gone to bed for the night and you're getting that eight hours of uninterrupted rest, um, you would get uh, all your spell slots back. But Arcane Recovery doesn't really have anything to do with that. This is strictly for like on a short rest. Hey, you can get some spells back. And that'll make more sense as you play um, how that works out for you. Okay. Uh, you do get some equipment being a wizard. You get a spell book, obviously. You get a quarter staff or a dagger, your choice. Um, you get a, as a wizard, you need things to cast your spells. You have two options. You could be the kind of wizard that has like a pouch of all sorts of ingredients, like newt's tails and bat dung and all sorts of other stuff that you could use to cast your spells. Or you can have a magical focus, something like a crystal orb or something like that that you channel your magic through. And then you get to pick between two packs. Um, as a wizard, I suggest the Scholar pack, but uh, the Explorer pack is there for you as well. And you get to pick all that stuff on a different page. So go ahead and click Next. All right, so this is where we get to pick your scores. And this kind of is like the building blocks of everything that you're going to be doing in the game. Um, there are several options on how to do it, uh, but we're going to go with something called Standard Array. So when that dropping drop down, just go ahead and click Standard Array. Um, and all right, so yeah, when you're looking at those, if you scroll down and you can see strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, you're going to get to put a score in each of those. And basically, those numbers you see 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15, mm -hmm. you have one of each of those numbers, and you get to put them in one of the skills. So, once you, for example, say put a 15 in strength, you no longer have a 15 that you can put in dexterity, constitution, and so on. Oh, okay if that makes sense. So you get to pick what number to put in each score. Now, if you scroll back up, um, you'll see that for your class, it has some suggested things. Uh, intelligence is always very important um, because as a wizard, your spell abilities and like how powerful they are or how hard it is for enemies to resist them is gonna be dependent on how smart you are. Uh, and then the other three, constitution, dexterity, charisma, you can see that they're slashed. Um, are variably important depending on what you think you could be doing with your wizard. Okay. Um, 
so basically this is saying hey you probably if you want to make the best um like skill wise wizard you're going to want to put your best score in intelligence right and then and, go down from there constitution dexterity and charisma yeah and now constitution dexterity and charisma aren't necessarily in descending order there you can kind of mix and match those they're just they all have a place in the wizarding character at some point okay and then one other thing for you to know, because of your race, you do have plus two to dexterity already and plus one to wisdom already. So whatever score you put in that slot will also get that number on top of it. So okay. if you were to put a 10 in dexterity, it will actually be a 12 when it's all said and done. All right. And if you have questions for what any of those skills might be used for, um, I can answer those as well. All right, well, I'm gonna give my highest point or 15 to intelligence, since I'm gonna need that. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need, since I'm a wizard, I do most of my fighting away and just spell casting. So I don't think I'm gonna need a lot of strength. Yeah, it's, so, as a wizard, it's pretty unlikely that you'll be frontline, not possible. Yeah. There are ways that you can make a strength wizard, but yeah, most likely you will not That's, have right. a lot of use for it. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to give that one the lowest one. And then, let me see. So Wisdom, I already have one. Let's do... All right. Constitution, I'll give a 14. Health down, vital force, important for everyone. Okay. It is pretty important for wizards, I would say, because there, yeah. there are certain spells. They're called, um, they have a, when you look at the spells in the list, they'll have like a little C next to them, a central uh -huh. concentration. So it, when, it's a spell that when you cast it, then you have to, for the turns going on, concentrate on using that spell to keep it going. Okay. And if somebody hits you, so it's like a bad guy was like to shoot you with an arrow while you're trying to concentrate on that spell, you have to try to maintain concentration and constitution mm -hmm. goes into that. Okay. So, so yeah, that okay. might be good to have. Okay. And then I already have a plus two on dexterity. So I'll give that one a 12. And then my charisma a 10. So there you go. All right, so if we scroll all the way back up, we can see what your final stats are there. Uh, pretty solid across the board, actually. Um, strength is the only one that's miserable. Charisma is just, you know, uh, average. Like, that's what an average person might have. And then all the rest are pretty good. So I think that's a good mix. And you nail everything that it wants you to have with intelligence being your best. So, cool. Uh, you can go ahead and scroll down. Click okay. next. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so background. Background is something to give your character a little bit more flavor and have an idea of where they're coming from and maybe what uh, what drives them. Uh, so you're going to have a whole list of backgrounds there. Um, so if you see one that catches your eye, you can click on it, and then in that little right uh, white window there, it'll kind of give you an idea of what it's about. Okay. A failed merchant. <laughs> <laughs> What's a grinner? A, does that say grinner? A grinner, let's see. It does say a grinner. Um, you know how to I find think, a hideout. Oh, that's from um, Eberron, I think. Your goals are to spread freedom and inspire hope or in time revolution in the hearts of the oppressed. It's oh, kind of cute. It's kind of cool. cool. I just saw Grinner. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, yeah. Deception and performance. So that gives you kind of an idea of what they're about. Okay. Um, oh my God, a pirate. How funny would it be to be a pirate halfling? It would be pretty funny. <laughs> what is that? Spent your youth under the sway of a dread pirate, a ruthless cutthroat who taught you how to survive the world of sharks and savages. You indulged in larceny on the high seas and sent more than one deserving soul to a bright grave. Fear and bloodshed are no stranger to you. That is. 
A pirate wizard. A pirate oh, wizard. Isn't that odd? <laughs> a pirate wizard ha- halfling. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> That'd be funny, though. Ah, oh, a pirate. I have to wonder how, how that, how, it, how he became a pirate or how I became a pirate. Or how he became a wizard. <laughs> That's true. Or how he became a wizard. God, I kind of like the pirate, but hold on. <laughs> a spy, a soldier, a smuggler, a sage. There's experts. Uh, do you have a master in your field of study? Oh, well, that one has that. Oops. Yeah, so if you do pick a background that gives you proficiency in something you already picked, we can go back and change it. Not a problem. Ah. Uh. I feel like that would be a little too easy. A marine? Hmm. God, I really like the pirate. I think that's just funny. What is a haunted one? Oh my god. You're haunted by something so terrible that you dare not speak of it. You try to bury it and run away from it with no avail. Whatever this thing is that haunts you, you can't slay it with a sword or banish it with a spell. <gasps> that sounds scary. It does sound pretty creepy. I kind of like that. It might come to you as a shadow on the wall, a blood curling nightmare, a memory that refuses to die, or a demonic whisper in the dark. Oh, that sounds gross. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like a crazy halfling that hears stuff. A haunted, a haunted um... wizard. A haunted, despondent halfling that buries himself in books to hide us from his fears. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. funny. And so if you look on the left-hand side, uh-huh. um, underneath the languages where it says Heart of Darkness, uh-huh. so that is something that your backgrounds each give you kind of like this thing that makes you special. So that is what it would be for you. So You have faced unimaginable horror and you're no stranger to darkness. And do every courtesy and do the utmost to help you unless you have shown yourself to be a danger to them. Mm. All right. I kind of like that one too. Okay. I kind of like that one too. Hmm. There are lots of good ones. I kind of like the haunted. Okay. Let's do haunted. I'm going to be haunted. I'm going to be the haunted one. All right. Haunted one wizard halfling it is. So you get to pick two skill proficiencies from the list of those drop downs. Okay. This one's already chosen. Why is Arcana already? Because you picked it on the previous. On previous, okay. Let's do. um, You can't have it twice, so you have to pick one of the others. And survival. Yes. Okay. Um, And then you get to pick two languages. Um, Let's see if we play around with your your background here. Depends on what it was that scared you. if it was something that was like haunting you in your dreams, it could be something like abyssal or maybe infernal could be a language that you have. Um, you're a halfling. If you have any uh, relations to ancient elven texts, sylvan could be something. Okay. If you have an interest in dragons, if your wizard studies dragons for any reason, draconic could be an option. I like sylvan. Minotaur. Does it give you that as an option? Yeah, it gives me minotaur. Oh, that's, that's an interesting one. Hey, if it gives you the option, you want Minotaur, take it. Minotaur and Goblin, Giant. Oh, Elvish and Dwarvish. Hmm. Oh, one of them has to be those. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you can pick any other language for the other one. I don't understand why I would know Minotaur. <laughs> that is up to you. Maybe... Uh... Maybe I went to them, right? Maybe you had a maybe you had a friend who was a Minotaur or something happened to him. Probably not likely because in this universe, Minotaur are evil demons. Maybe okay. that's what you're afraid of. Maybe there's a Minotaur, a Minotaur who's been stalking <gasps> you and you, you know his language or something. I'm gonna pick a Minotaur. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's the Minotaur that scares me. Maybe right. that's what's haunting you. The that's Minotaur that me. and I know hunts you know in your that. labyrinth dream. Labyrinth dream? Labyrinth, labyrinth. Um harrowing event. All right, so the, this next part, uh, the heart harrowing event, personality traits, ideal bonds of flaws, these are role-playing guides. So these are little things about your character that will help you know how to role-play them and guide you as you as you play. So uh, the harrowing events, you basically get to pick an event that caused you to feel so haunted. So maybe 
for example, number one, a monster slaughtered a dozen of innocent people could have been the Minotaur. Because they're demons, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's like eight of them, so if there's anything in there that looks interesting to you. You're born under a dark star. You can feel it watching you. Coldly and distantly. Sometimes it beckons you in the dead of night. Ugh! An apparition haunted. No, I don't like that one. Your family has a history of practicing dark arts. I don't like that one either. Oh, yeah. Something cold and unable to stop it. Oh my god, that one's... Wow. A hag kidnapped you and raised you. You escaped, but the hag... <laughs> Still has him. Oh my god! <laughs> what? You did terrible things to avenge the murder of someone you love. You became a monster and it haunts your waking dreams. <laughs> I kind of like that a fiend possessed you as a child. You were locked away but escaped. The fiend's still inside you, but now you try to keep it bottled up. I like that one. But since I guess I don't know. Hmm. What are you thinking? What is your your I don't know thought? I'm going to choose The Fiend. I like that one. Because I was thinking, okay. like, uh, the monster that slaughtered dozens of innocent people spared my life, and you don't know why. Um, I don't know. I don't think I don't see how that's, like, too haunting. I, I guess it could be haunting, like, a survivor's guilt or whatever. But I kind of like that a fiend possessed me as a child. That's kind of cool. I like that one. Right. Fiend it is. Fiend. All right. This next part is personality okay. traits. You get to pick two of them. Okay. Um, and they're kind of just uh, guide rails for you on how you role play your character and their personality. Ooh, I had an encounter that I believe gives me a special affinity with a supernatural creature or event. Um, oh my god, I love that I never accept that I'm out of my depth. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. It's a stubborn, it's a stubborn halfling right there. Stubborn halfling. <laughs> I must know the answer to every secret. No door remains unopened in my presence. Oh, that's... <laughs> that is so funny. Um, I let people underestimate me. Feel oh, I like that one. Revealing my full uh, competency only to those close to me. I like that one. People under I let people underestimate me because I'm tiny. Because I'm small. Okay. I like that one. And then you get to pick one more from that same um... list. Let's see. Ooh, I like this one too. I have a personal ritual mantra or relaxation method that I use to deal with stress. That could be good because I have that inner inner fiend that I'm trying to keep under control. Kind of okay. like that. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I like that one. So whenever I get too stressed out or overwhelmed, I have to do that in order to keep that fiend. That sounds cool. Perfect. I'm easily startled, but I'm not a coward. That's me in real life. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. So the next one is your ideal. Ideal is uh, something that drives you, basically. Okay. Uh, let's see. Adrenaline. Balance. No, not balance. Bound. I've wronged someone. and No, not that one. Escape. I believe there's something beyond the world I know and I need to find it. Mm, I don't think so. Legacy. I must do something so that I'm remembered. I don't think I don't think that I don't think that. Um hmm. I really don't know what drives that's all of these seem I don't know. They don't quite fit you? Hmm. Mr. Oh, this would be this would be a good time to note um, for you and the people watching. So these are kind of guide rails. These are what these are suggestions the books give to help new players have options to you know role play their first character. They're not things you have to pick. So if you don't like any of those ideals, we can come up one, you know, from scratch as well. Yeah, obsession. I kind of like obsession just because it seems to fit. Like I've lived, you know, since I was possessed as a child so like i kind of like obsession i've lived this way for so long i can't imagine another way that would make sense yeah, you've been yeah. living in fear of this thing you've got your mantra that's kind of you've got that down and yeah um yeah no, i think that makes sense it makes sense i can't imagine living any other way because that, that makes sense to me more than any of the these other ones um yeah i'm gonna choose obsession okay 
bond is something that uh, sort of gives you a stake in the world. It ties you to the place you're in um, and gives you a reason to keep fighting on kind of thing or to do what you do. Okay. Um, but I lost them in the mist. Okay. Everything I do is in service of a powerful master. Ooh. When I must keep a secret from everyone. Oh, that's that's interesting. Nobody knows that I have a powerful master. Mentor, I've seen great darkness and I'm committed to being a light against it. The light of all light. I love that one. Oh, yeah, I like that one. I've seen darkness, but I'm committed to being the light. Yes. Okay, perfect. I like that one. <laughs> I, I think that fits. Um, you've got your mantra. You're, you're kind of like, you're kind of the Hulk. You're kind of like a dark halfling Hulk. You've got that monster inside you. You've got this yeah. common technique to keep it inside. And you want to be a beacon of good for people because you know what's inside of you is so destructive. Um, now, no character is perfect. So now you got to pick a flaw. Okay. Um, I'm convinced something is after me appearing in places that will not make sense. I'm especially superstitious and live uh, life seeking to avoid bad luck, wicked spirits, or no, that doesn't make any sense because I'm a wizard. I've done evil. Um, I believe. <laughs> I'm gullible. <laughs> that one's funny. I'm gullible. I believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see I need to find the best in everyone and everything even when that means denying obvious ma malice I'm really cautious I have a reputation of defeating a great evil but that's a lie <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, but I like the fact that I'm gullible I, I like that Okay. I think that's funny. Like super serious. <laughs> super serious, but I'll believe anything. Okay, yeah. I, like I that. think that is that is really good. I like that. <laughs> and more perceptive characters will be like, really? Yeah, I'll believe it. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. So that is kind of your guide rails then. That, okay. that is uh, uh, to help you kind of role play, uh, knowing these things about yourself. And when you're in a situation, you can think to yourself, okay, this is what my guy's been through. This is what he believes in. What would he do or she do in this situation? Uh, let's go ahead and click next. Uh, you're going to pick standard, I think it is. Uh, class equipment? Starting yeah. Class equipment. Okay. All right, so you get to pick a quarter staff or a dagger. I want a dagger. Okay. Like, I, I knew um, immediately when you told me that I could pick one of those jobs, like, I want the dagger. <laughs> dagger it is. Yeah. Uh, I want component the pouch. I want the focus. You want the focus? I want the focus object. Yeah. Well, what would your focus be, do you think? Um, Like a, a little cr a crystal. That's why I want a crystal. I want to focus on check. a little crystal. Okay, okay. <laughs> be a crystal, like like my uh, like a worry stone. Oh, all right, a worry stone. It is. Yeah, that is your arcane focus. So you'll need that whenever you want to cast spells. So uh, if anybody steals that from you, that's gonna be a sad day. Okay. Yeah, cause I don't like the pouch. Like I feel like uh, I don't want to be carrying around too much stuff. So I just like the little <laughs> focus thing. Okay, yeah. focus. It is worry stone. And then you get a scholar's pack or an explorer's pack. Um, one's going to have like scholarly stuff like quills and papers and all sorts of things that would probably be wizardly. Mm -hmm. uh, the explorer's pack is more like uh, rope and uh, sleeping bags and things like that. Like if you were to go out adventuring. Oh, I'm going on an adventure. <laughs> yes. Um... <laughs> yeah, I'll do the scholar's pack. Okay. And then next. Uh, yep, next. Next. This is the fun part. <gasps> You're a wizard, so you get to pick some spells. Um, 
And a uh, homework assignment for you after we're done, I'll, I'll give you at the end. Uh, you want to okay. be thinking about what school of magic your wizard is going to be involved in. Um, I can actually list them off to you just to give you some ideas. Actually, yes, let's do this here. Um, so let's see, wizard schools by the, okay. Uh, so here are the things that you'll be looking at down the road. Um, you've got uh, our school of abjuration. So that's going to be like warding things, banishing, uh, using spells that are gonna block and protect people. Okay. Uh, school of divination is what it sounds like, seeing the future and kind of reading the tea leaves kind of stuff. School of necromancy is dealing with the dead, raising the dead, being like fascinated by life, magic, and curses. Uh, School of conjuration is making things materialize out of nowhere. Um, so uh, like flying swords or making small knickknacks appear or being able to teleport, that'd be conjuration. Uh, war magic is basically what it sounds like, spells that do lots of destructive things. Mm -hmm. uh, school of Transmutation is manipulating matter, um, turning gold into straw type stuff, um, but cooler than what I just said. <laughs> um, school of Evocation is destructive force. Uh, it's, it's a little bit different than being a uh, than war magic, because war magic is... Uh, kind of like battlefield stuff and like being able to like give yourself self-protection. Evocation is pure firepower. Okay. Uh, so it's like throwing huge fireballs or calling down lightning storms, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a school of illusions. So like trickery, creating illusions, mimicking voices. Uh, like you could, for example, when you get more powerful, make it look like there's solid ground where there is none and it's actually like a cavern and somebody falls into it, that kind of stuff. Um, School of Enchantment is basically being a Jedi. These are not the droids you're looking for. Now you're my friend, you know, um, that kind of stuff, hypnotizing people and thralling yeah. them. Uh, and Bladesinger won't apply to you, so we're just going to skip that one. So those are the, any sound interesting to you off the bat? Conjuring. Conjuring. Okay, so what you're probably going to want to do, you know, I wouldn't pick all conjuring spells, but you're going to want to pick at least a handful of them out of the list that say they're from the school of conjuring. Uh, since eventually you're going to be going to specialize in that, those spells will be very useful to you later. Okay. Now, cantrips, and I explained this before, but just as a reminder, cantrips are like weak spells. They're like things that you can do over and over again, like um, making a loud sound or mm -hmm. doing a light, creating a noise somewhere. Uh, mending a broken stick, you know, those things that are not hard to do, and you can do as many times a day as you want, and you get to pick three of them. Okay. And if you have questions on any of them, uh, you can click on them, it'll show up on the right-hand panel, and I can help explain them as well. It's a true strike. Point of figure at a target, your magic grants you a brief insight into the target's defenses. Uh, first or second roll provided that this spell hasn't ended. So yeah, so if you were um, planning on maybe doing an attack next round, basically you could select a target and on your next attack, you'll get what's called advantage. So remember when you roll the d20 that determines whether you hit or not, uh -huh. you, you get to roll two d20s and pick the greater of the two. That's what advantage is. Okay. Mending. Oops, that's not it. Mending. Instantaneous, spell repairs a single break or tear in an object you touch. A broken two halves, a broken key, a torn cloak can repair a magic item, but the spell can't restore magic to the object. Um, I kind of like mending, that could come in handy. Yeah, never know when you might have a broken wagon wheel. Yeah. And just uh, so you can see what I was talking about earlier, you see where it says cantrip transmutation? Yeah. That's what the school is. So if you see cantrip conjuration, for example, oh, that's okay. the school you were talking about. So create a bonfire would probably be conjur. Yep, conjuration. Okay. <laughs> bonfire is a very useful cantrip. Yeah. Let's do bonfire. And then a firebolt. I kind of like that one too. 
firebolt. Is that conjure? No, that's evocation. Evocation. Hurl. Uh, 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 uh. One hit. I usually recommend, because uh, so right now you've got mending, which is sort of like a utility spell. Create a bonfire can be both utility and an attack defense spell. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, I usually recommend having at least one attack cantrip, something that you can do over and over again that doesn't use a spell slot. So firebolt would be firebolt an attack. Uh, but there are other ones on there as well. This is the only one. Okay. So I saw Acid Splash. That sounds kind of cool. <laughs> that is a conjuration. Oh. I uh, so you can hurl. Yeah. You can see within range. If you're close to they must be within five feet. Um, so you can, you can potentially hit two targets at once. Once, yeah. If they're next to each other, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'll do with those three. All right. And then here is saying because you're a halfling and you picked Mark of the Healing, you get Cure Wounds by default. Uh, yeah. Cure Wounds is just a spell that uh, you have to touch the target, but if you touch them, you can heal a certain amount of damage to them. Um, and then you get to pick <laughs> six level one wizard spells. Yay. Now, these <clears throat> are the ones that um, I think at level one you get either three or four spell slots, so you can cast four level one spells a day, but you get six different spells that you can have. Okay. Ooh, charm a person. If you attempt to charm a humanoid, you can see within range. There's some saving throw. So basically, you can try to make somebody who's not necessarily your friend be your friend magically for a brief amount of time. They'll suddenly see you as being this great person that they want to be friends with. Um, if you're fighting them, they have a better chance at resisting it because it's possible to be resisted. Um, when it's when it's done, when the spell's over, they know that you cast a spell on them. So that is something. Uh, that I don't like that. <laughs> Ooh, an earth tremor. A tremor on the ground within range. Each creature other than you in that area must make sturdy saving throw. Okay. So it's basically like a little mini earthquake. Mini it earthquake. does some damage and knocks them off their feet. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. Chromatic orb. A creature that you can see within range. You hurl a four inch fear of energy at a creature that you can see within range. Oh. Thunder is a type of orb you create. I like that one too. Yeah, that one's nice because it's versatile. So if you know something's weak to lightning, you can you've got yeah. lightning available to you. Oh, disguise self. That's illusion. None of these are um conjuring. There'll be some in there. Okay. Um I can look at a list as well to give some ideas. Uh five E conjuration. Level one conjuration. I, I like disguising myself. Make yourself... That is a fun one. Yeah, I like disguising. So here are some conjuration spells to give you some ideas uh, for level one. Uh, there's one called Ensnaring Strike, um, which basically, next time you hit a creature with a weapon or whatever, it makes them like vines sprout out of the ground and kind of entangle them. Oh, okay. Uh, there is also find familiar, so you can conjure up like a little animal familiar that you can have like go around with you, and it like maybe can scout for you or like distract things in combat. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna conjure up a turtle. <laughs> you could do a turtle. <laughs> that would be uh, it'd be slow, but it would be fun. My turtle's um, fast. <laughs> yo, you got a fast turtle. Okay. Uh, fog cloud. You could conjure a cloud of fog to like obfuscate an area. Okay, uh, I see fog cloud right here. Grease is one of my favorite conjuration spells. You create like a puddle of grease on the ground that causes people to slip and fall. And um, if, if you use it right, it can really mess up their entire turn. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see all of these down here. <sighs> uh, there's one called Unseen Servant where you create like this invisible like spirit being that like can do things for you. Like go, like maybe say, say you're in a temple and there's a spike pit and you guys are trying to figure out how to get across it to pull a lever. You could create this unseen servant on the other side and he could go pull the lever for you, for example. Oh, that's, that's neat. Um, okay. I, th I think that that would be helpful. So I'm going to choose that one. I think that would be helpful in the group. That way nobody risks their life. Um, what was the, 
the one uh, that you, you that you said were I'm sorry, totally forgot already. Um, find familiar. Find familiar. Yeah, that one. Oh, there it is. Spirit takes an animal form. Oh, there's no turtle. It has to be one of these. That's okay. Form back, Chris. Ooh, an octopus. Ooh, a poisonous snake. I like that too. And we can always reflavor things too. So if you really want a turtle, we can find the closest thing, like a crab, and make it a turtle. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um. Um. Then I'm going to give you a um advice for your last spell. You should pick shield. Shield. Okay. It is uh, almost every wizard takes shield at the first level. Basically, what it is, it's a spell you can cast as a reaction. So if somebody goes to attack you and you think they're going to hit. You can cast this. It'll increase your armor by five until your next turn. So everything that tries to attack you will have a harder time hitting you. It's just a nice little defensive spell to have. Okay. And you don't have to. Just uh, throwing it out there. It uh, does do make that. you more survivable. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, I'm, I'm debating between like uh, removing the servant or the familiar and replacing it with something else. What are you thinking? Just because one... The unseen servant would like do something that we don't want to do, right? And then the familiar would scout out a place. Yeah, they're slightly different. So, like the unseen, if you click on unseen servant, click the little eye next to it, the information eye. Um, so it creates an invisible, shapeless force that can do yeah. simple tasks. Um, and you can command it up on your turn as a bonus action, and it can like do things like carry objects, go retrieve things, open doors, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, familiars, they're kind of small animals, so they can't do complicated tasks like that, but they can do things like scout. Um, they can do things like uh, nip at the heels of the guy next to you to help you get advantage on like an attack, uh, things like that. Yeah. Uh, different utilities, but they're also kind of similar in the sense that you get mm -hmm. like a thing to command yeah so i kind of want to i kind of want to keep the familiar one find familiar and then change the unseen servant okay what is sleep sleep uh sleep allows you to it's an area of effect spell so you pick a space i think it's a 20 foot radius circle um and all the creatures in that space are at risk of falling asleep so it'll including my team Including your team, so you do have to strategically place it. Okay. Uh, but it goes by hit points, so it starts with the creatures with the lowest hit points because they're kind of like the weakest, um, mm -hmm. you know, physically at that point, so they're more susceptible to going unconscious. And then it uh, trickles down until it runs out of. So the way it works mechanically is you'll roll five d eight. Uh -huh. And that number is going to be what determines it. So say there's a goblin with 7 HP, it'll go to sleep, and then it'll take 7 out of that 5 to 8, and then it'll go to the next creature and so on until you run out of, you know, points. Okay. That's a Jim's magic missile. <laughs> yeah. So that one we actually can't use. But uh, uh, like, what if, you want, if, you, if you want a magic <laughs> missile, that is actually us, though. Um, I'm going to go with Greece. I'll just go with Greece. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So Earth Tremor. All right, you got a good, pretty good mix of uh, attack spells, utility spells, and um, stuff you can be kind of tactical with, so that's good. Um, and you'll want to read about your class a little bit, and you'll kind of learn as you play, but uh, the way a wizard works is he's only got so much room in his brain. Mm -hmm. uh, to memorize spells, so every night or every day, rather, when he wakes up, he reads his book. He picks a few spells that he wants to just kind of like keep in his mind. And so every day you do what's called prepping a spell. So you won't, for example, have access to all six of those spells every day. You'll pick like four of them. Okay. Um, each day that you can use, and the other two you won't be able to use until next time you prep them. Okay, and that's the level one spells, or does that include the cantrips as well? Cantrips uh, are different. Cantrips you always have. You always have those. Um, okay. Yeah, they're just so simple that you don't even have to really think about it. Okay. Um, and then your cure wounds does not count towards that because it's just a natural trait of you being a halfling. Okay. All right, go ahead and click next. Uh, you don't get any feats. Not yet. That'll be down the road. So go ahead and click uh, next. There it goes. Uh, do you have any idea what you want to name your character? Oh. Um, no, I don't know. 
Uh, so in that halfling section to the right, it'll give you examples of halfling names, or you can just wait and uh, you know pick your name off stream, and um, it'll be a surprise for when we start the show. Hmm. I don't know. Did Babs pick a name? <laughs> she did. She did. Okay. She did. Oh no! What do I want people to call me? Uh, let's see. <laughs> um. Hmm. I, I do want to. I do want to pick a name though. I kind of want to pick one from like Harry Potter though. Um, That's fine. You can even do like a play of something off Harry Potter. Yeah. Like Harry Potter, for example. You know, it's kind of moving the letters around. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna pick Luna. Luna. I love Luna. Luna. She's adorable. That's a, that's a good halfling name. I like it. Luna. Here we go. And then um, you can pick age, height, and weight, and all that stuff off stream. That's um, okay. that's pretty easy. Uh, next. Oh, we didn't choose your alignment. Okay. Uh, we'll go back and do that. So on uh, race, go ahead up on the top and click the race tab. Uh, all right. So alignment. Okay. I do do alignment in my games, even though a lot of people uh, in the woke crowds don't like it. I think it's a good guidepost. Basically, your alignment, it's not its not hard and true, right? So whatever alignment you pick, you don't have to always act that way. But it's yeah. generally speaking, in most situations, how would your character act? What is, what is their alignment? And you've got uh, the scale of good, neutral, and evil. And then you have the scale of lawful... Um, chaotic and also neutral neutral yeah yeah so for example a lawful good person uh -huh. would be somebody who's generally good does good things and they specifically adhere to a set of laws or code of conduct or a personal code or something like that that they will always abide by and it's usually going to be a good aligned type of code okay what about chaotic uh, so chaotic is sort of like um, it, what it sounds like, uh, very random and free. It sort of depends on which one you pick. Are you looking at like chaotic good or chaotic neutral? I kind of like chaotic neutral. Okay. Uh, so chaotic neutral is basically you're kind of a, a free spirit. You follow your own heart. Uh, you're not really big on rules or traditions. Um you really embrace freedom specifically for yourself. Okay. I, I'm going to do that chaotic neutral. Okay. So we go and back. And go ahead and click review. Okay. And that should. Uh... Yeah, there we go. All right. It's not yelling at us anymore. So that's good. And we'll scroll down to make sure everything is there and then click apply changes. <gasps> Build my character. Boom. Your sheet is filled out. Nice. Everything is there. And you have built your first D&D &D character. How do you feel? That's exciting. I love it. That is exciting. Luna has so much personality. Luna. I really like that you picked Haunted One. I think that's going to be super interesting. Yeah. Um, cool. And you and you picked some pretty good spells. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, it's going to be fun. Uh, so your character is really interesting. Blab's had a really interesting character <laughs> so far. This is going really well. Um, okay. Now, then, as, as a... Um, connoisseur of D, &D. Uh, how would you rate my character because i mean this is my first time building one i'm just kind of like oh that sounds good that sounds good uh, i think you did really well actually yeah. um it's interesting because you and blabs had a very different her character feels kind of like a quilt of different pieces of very unusual cloth uh, and yours feels more like a, a, a well-structured blanket or cloth, uh, something more um, in tune with all of its parts. Uh, I think it all meshes together really well. I, I like the conjuration. I like the background you picked and how it kind of ties into what you're doing. And your spells are good. You picked solid spells. Uh, they're going to line up with the conjuration school if that is what you end up picking. And mm -hmm. um, all your skills make sense for what you're doing. So. Cool. Uh, all level one characters are in great peril when they start off. Uh, it is the most dangerous level of all. Everything's at risk of killing you, but uh, um, I, I think you have put wait. something that will make you survivable. I can't <clears throat> wait. I can't wait to be in fear of dying. 
And hey, you got one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best uh, racial traits. Lucky is such a good one. Um, so when you do have those failures, you can turn it around, which is which is kind of nice. Uh, but cool. <laughs> Dope. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be fantastic. So uh, that's Luna. Uh, that was my Nerdy Homes character. She's going to be great. Uh, I, I don't know if you're an artist um, outside of like your memory. You're definitely an artist in regards to memes, but I don't know if you're like a artist in terms of drawing. No, very. Um, no, I'm not. I can draw, okay. but it's like basic stuff. Very basic things. So then what you, you can do is you can just Google like halfling wizard or something and just find something that sort of resembles what you think Luna will look like. Okay. And we'll make a token for her so you have something to represent you in the game. And uh, yeah, um, it's going to be interesting seeing these characters interact. And uh, we still have four more to make. So this is the second video in our character creation series. Uh, next one up is going to be X-Ray Girl, I believe. And um, did you did you look at the character uh, planning sheet? I did. did you to, so you saw everybody picked? Yeah. Okay, I won't have you guess. <laughs> um, but that's super cool. Uh, so we're going to put that away. And uh, let me... Uh, where can they find you? Where do you do your things? What would you like to plug? Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, all at the same name, My Nerdy Home. Fantastic. Uh, and I'm a Uh You can find me on Twitter as well, uh, but probably easier to find Geeks and Gamers Tabletop, which is GNG Tabletop on Twitter. And if you could find that, you'll find me just naturally because I'm posting all over our posts. Um, and yeah, check out our Twitch channel, which is also GNG Tabletop, our YouTube channel, which is also GNG Tabletop, and our Gilded Server, which is also GNG Tabletop. It's all very simple. We're going to be doing lots of things. This show, this live stream will be starting on April 7th. And we'll be doing six character creation videos leading up to this um, this uh, broadcast. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, we do have our six people that have already been announced. And just as a little bit of an exciting kind of tease, we also have at least two confirmed guest appearances from other GNG members that have not been revealed. Uh, that will be tuning into the, or joining us on the show as well. So lots of geeks and gamers, Easter eggs will be in the adventure too. Little inside jokes. If you watch any of the streams that Geeks and Gamers does, you'll know exactly what those jokes are when they show up. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm excited. <laughs> me too. But uh, all right. Well, hey, thanks for joining me. And thanks for those of you at home who tuned in to watch her make her character. And we will see you guys in two weeks. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.